So this example is going to be typical of the kind of the example that you see in the AP exam. It's going to have a lot of wording, a lot going on. Don't let, the, don't let that intimidate you. Um, a lot of times, half the problem will be just a description of what's happening so that you have a sense of what's going on so that you can deduce the chemistry or deduce the math from that. Again, don't get intimidated. So let's just start, see where we go. Uh, the nitrogen content of an organic compound can be determined by something called the Dumas method. The compound is passed over hot copper oxide and reacts as follows. So I'm going to go ahead and write the reaction. It is, you take the compound, you pass it over hot copper oxide, and you end up producing nitrogen gas, you end up producing CO2 gas, and you end up producing water vapor, water gas. Okay. Let's see, total pressure, no CO2, H2O, and two. Um, okay, now they say the product gases are passed through a solution of potassium hydroxide to remove the carbon dioxide. So you produce three gases, and then you pass it through a solution of potassium hydroxide that um, binds the carbon dioxide and gets it out of the way. The remaining gas is nitrogen saturated with water vapor. Nitrogen saturated with water vapor. That just means nitrogen and water vapor in the same gas mixture. That's all this means. Okay, in a given experiment, 0 0.225 grams of the unknown compound produces 27.8 milliliters of nitrogen saturated with water vapor at 25 degrees Celsius and 730 torr. What is the mass percent of nitrogen in the compound? The vapor pressure of water at this temperature is 23.8 torr. Okay, what are they asking for? They want to know what is the mass percent of nitrogen in this compound? Well, we know mass percent, so let's just write out the equation so we don't get lost. Our mass percent equals the mass of nitrogen over the total mass times 100. So that's all we want. We have the total mass already. Our compound is 0.225 grams. We already have one of the numbers. All we need to do is find the mass of nitrogen. So let's take a look and see how we're going to do this. So again, mass of nitrogen, chances are we're going to have to find the number of moles of nitrogen, and the number of moles is going to come from the ideal gas equation. So let's just work forward. We're dealing with a mixture here. We have a mixture of water vapor and nitrogen because the carbon dioxide has been removed by the potassium hydroxide solution. Therefore, our total pressure of the system is equal to the partial pressure of the nitrogen gas plus the partial pressure of the, um, of the water vapor. I just wrote the nitrogen. Okay, well, let's see what we have. In a given experiment, unknown compound, nitrogen saturated with water, 730 torr. That's our total pressure. So we have 730 torr. We need the partial pressure of nitrogen in order to find the number of moles of nitrogen. And they gave us the vapor pressure of water is 23.8 torr. So again, we can find the partial pressure of nitrogen with a simple arithmetic problem, 730 minus 23.8. And we end up with uh, 702. Is that correct? 23, 24, 731. Yes, 702 uh, tor. Wait, is that correct? 730 minus, no, that's not correct. That's not 702 tor. Let me see, let's do some quick arithmetic. Arithmetic has never been my strong suit. Uh, 30, 23.8. 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. That's going to be 706, I think, point 0.2, okay? Tor. Excellent. And then we're going to multiply that by, we're going to convert that to atmospheres. So one atmosphere over uh, 760 tor. 
Okay, so I don't have a calculator at my disposal. Um, my number was originally incorrect when I did this, but I'm going to use my original number. So I'm going to do it as if it were 7702. But again, the division of the number, it, it's this process that's important, not the actual number here. So I'm going to use the original number that I got, which was 0 0.924 atmospheres. So that is the partial pressure of the nitrogen gas. Okay, well, PV equals NRT, the partial pressure of the nitrogen gas times the volume equals the number of moles of nitrogen gas times RT, rearrange, the number of moles of nitrogen gas equals the P of N2 times the V over RT, and the pressure is 0 0.924 atmospheres times and we collected 27.8 milliliters, so we want to convert that to liters, 0 0.0278 liters. The gas constant is 0 0.08206, and our temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, which is 298 Kelvin, and again, liter, Kelvin, atmosphere. We end up with a number of moles is equal to 0 0.001 zero five moles of nitrogen gas. Well, zero point zero zero one zero five moles of nitrogen gas times twenty eight grams per mole. It's twenty eight because this is N two. Nitrogen is fourteen, N two is twenty eight. We end up with zero point zero two nine four grams of N2. Okay, mass percent equals 0 0.0294 grams divided by the total number of grams, which was 0 0.225 in our compound. When we multiply by 100%, 13% nitrogen by mass. There we go. We converted the nitrogen in a compound to a gas. We, well, to nitrogen gas, to carbon dioxide gas, to water gas. We took care of the carbon dioxide gas. Therefore, now we have a mixture of nitrogen and water vapor. We know at a certain temperature that the vapor pressure of water is a certain number. We can look that up in a chart, or we're given it in the problem. We can find the partial pressure of nitrogen. From the partial pressure of nitrogen, we use our one te basic technique, which is the ideal gas law to find the number of moles of nitrogen. From the number of moles of nitrogen, we find the number of grams of nitrogen. Take the number of grams of nitrogen, divide by the number of grams of the total compound, and that gives us the mass percent. So again, the problem is routine in the sense that it's nothing you haven't done before. You're doing the same problems over and over again, but now we're doing it in the context of gases so the technique that we use is Dalton's law of partial pressures and the ideal gas law. Everything is going to be a variation of that. If you sort of look at it that way globally, I think a lot of this will start to make more sense. And again, we start with the chemistry, start with an equation, balance the equation, see if you can understand what's going on, uh, let the problem wash over you. There's nothing strange that's happening here. It's basic math. It just needs to be arranged in a certain way. Okay, so that's Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures and a little bit of mole fraction and things like that. So with that, I will say thank you for joining us here at educator.com and we'll see you next time.